What if I told you the 2025 and 2026 Formula One championships might have already been decided, and not by a driver, but by this man, a quiet figure from the McLaren pit wall? It sounds crazy, but it's exactly what George Russell has hinted at. Now, with 11 races left, anything can happen. But let's unpack the secret that could be giving McLaren an almost unfair advantage. This is Rob Marshall, McLaren's chief designer. For years, he was the secret weapon hiding in Adrian Newey's shadow at Red Bull. While Newey got the credit for Red Bull's world-beating cars, Marshall was the structural genius who brought those radical ideas to life. He's the godfather of two of the cleverest tricks in the modern F1 paddock, the Mini DRS, and more importantly, the Flexi Wing. You've probably heard the term. A flexi wing is a front or rear wing on an F1 car that's designed to intentionally bend or flex under the immense pressure of air at high speed. Now, F1 engineers live by a simple code. If the rule book doesn't say you can't do it, then it's fair game. They are masters of exploiting gray areas, and flexi wings are the perfect example. It's a constant cat and mouse game, and it was only a matter of time before the FIA stepped in to stop things from getting out of hand. A new technical clarification is set to take effect at the Spanish Grand Prix to limit flexi wings. This could completely shake up the championship, creating a two-speed grid between the teams who have mastered this dark art and those who haven't. So let's break down this entire affair so you know exactly what to watch for. First, why would a wing on a multi-million dollar race car bend in the first place? Aren't they supposed to be rock solid? Well, yes and no. F1 cars are made of incredibly rigid materials like carbon fiber. Article 3.2.2 of the technical regulations even states that all bodywork must be rigidly fixed. But here's a simplified physics lesson. Nothing is perfectly rigid. If you made a carbon fiber wing that was 100% rigid and didn't move at all, it would also be incredibly brittle. The slightest force would shatter it. In reality, all materials have what's called elasticity. Think of a plastic ruler, you can bend it, and when you let go, it snaps back to its original shape. That's elasticity. Push it too far, and it breaks. A carbon fiber wing is the same, just on a much stiffer scale. Deformation is simply inevitable. Because of this, the FIA has to allow for a tiny, acceptable amount of flex. They test this by putting specific weights on the wings while the car is stationary in the garage. If the wing bends too much, the car is illegal. If it stays within the limit, it passes. And that small, acceptable limit is the loophole. So why are teams so obsessed with making their wings flex? It's not for looks, it's to solve the fundamental Achilles heel of modern ground effect F1 cars. These cars have two major handling problems. Low speed understeer, in slow corners you turn the steering wheel but the front of the car wants to go straight. The front tires aren't biting. High speed oversteer, in fast corners the rear of the car becomes light and unstable feeling like it's about to spin out. You can fix one problem with wing adjustments, but it almost always makes the other one worse. Add more front wing to cure the understeer, and you create massive oversteer at high speed. Reduce the front wing to stabilize the car at high speed, and you get crippling understeer in the slow stuff. But what if you could have the best of both worlds? What if you could have high downforce in slow corners and less downforce in fast corners? That is the magic of the flexi wing. By being rigid at low speeds, it gives the driver all the front end grip they need. Then at high speeds, the force of the air causes the wing elements to flex down, reducing downforce, stabilizing the rear of the car, and cutting drag. It's the perfect solution. So here's how the engineers pull it off. They design a wing that is perfectly rigid right up to the limit of the FIA's static load test. It passes inspection with flying colors. But the forces on track at 300 kilometers per hour are far greater than the test weights in the garage. Once the car hits the track, the wing starts to bend beyond that static test point, unlocking its performance benefit. It's legal in the garage, but does something very different on the circuit. This led to a full-blown arms race. McLaren's Miami upgrade in 2024, which turned their season around, was a flexi wing masterstroke. Ferrari protested at first, but when the FIA didn't act, they built their own, winning in Austin and Mexico. Even Alpine brought a version late last year. Red Bull interestingly stayed out of it, choosing instead to complain to the FIA, hoping for a crackdown. 
That crackdown has finally arrived. It's called Technical Directive 018. A TD is just a clarification of the rules to close a loophole. In this case, TD 018 will apply the same loads during the tests, but it will demand less deformation. This won't eliminate flexing, but it will make it much harder for teams like McLaren to find that perfect setup sweet spot. A flexi wing makes the car's balance much more forgiving. Without it, the car becomes edgier and harder to drive. Finding the perfect setup, which McLaren did so brilliantly brilliantly in Australia, will become much more difficult. The teams using these wings now have to scramble to conform before the Spanish Grand Prix. Why? Because the bulk of the season will be run under this new rule, and teams need to shift their resources to the all-new 2026 cars. You don't want to waste time developing a car around a concept that's about to be nerfed. So back to George Russell's claim, is he right? Yes and no. McLaren's car isn't ultra-dominant by design. Its genius lies in its ability to hit a perfect setup window that puts it three-tenths clear of everyone else on a good day. It unlocks incredible performance and tire management. The new TD-018 is designed to shrink that window. The Spanish Grand Prix will be the moment of truth. We'll see if teams like McLaren lose their edge or if they've already adapted. The performance at the front is so tight that the pecking order could be completely reshuffled. And remember, Flexi wings will never truly die. As long as physics exists, so will deformation. It's an inevitable part of racing, just like Fernando Alonso's career eventually coming to an end. But we'll talk about that in a future video. If you don't want to miss it, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching.